Partner, welcome to a special edition of board games. Everybody should. <coughs> yeah. Why is it special? You may be asking. Because in this video, I'm going to be showing you a game called Outlaws, and it's not those ones you're married to, but this is a Kickstarter game from Holy Grail Games. In this game, you and a partner are going to go off in a Mexican kind of standoff thing. Mexican standoff, that's the one. And you're going to be trying to get your governor elected of your town. Or you're going to try and pick off that critter with a hitman. Or you're going to try and catch that hitman with your rootin' tootin' good sheriff. Yes, sir. That's the game. Because this town ain't big enough for the both of us. Now I'm going to show you how to play this little duty. And, uh, yeah, once I show you how to play this game, I'll be able to tell you what I think about this rootin' toot environment. Can't even get it open. Ah, oh, Carl! No, I can't do a Rick voice. I can't, really can't. Just quickly before I show you the game, I just want to mention that this is a prototype. So all the components and bits and pieces that you see on this video are going to differ a little bit to the final version. If you go to the Kickstarter page, Q Kickstarter link thing, um, you'll see that the art on the tokens has changed. The character cards now come with one leg and they also have some iconography on them. And there might be some other changes later on in the future. So just bear that in mind while you're watching this video. So, this game for two players, what will happen is each player will choose one of the coloured factions, red or green. Each player also takes a bullet token and handcuff token and they place it face up in front of themselves. All the other tokens you'll mix up into a pile, leave them face down so people can't see what they are. There are included in there some other bullets and handcuff tokens, there are some envelope voting tokens there is the election token, and there are a couple of bogus tokens too. This pile of extra tokens you'll place at one end of the table. To, you'd call this the saloon, so to say. And then you'll place out eight of these tokens in a line between both players. Then each player is going to look at their 10 characters and choose eight of them to go face to face in this duel. You'll choose one and place it in front of one of the tokens. The other player will do the same. Eventually you'll have eight characters along the street next to the saloon, which will be back to back. So you'll be able to see what your characters are, but your opponent won't. The other two characters you'll place in the saloon, but these will be visible for all players to see. Now there are three ways to win at this game. You've either got to get your governor to have the most voting envelopes and then pick up the election token. And if you have more voting envelopes than your opponent, you instantly win the game. Or you can place your hitman in front of the governor, naming him as the governor and have a bullet token taking him out, which will win you the game as well. Or you can be the sheriff and reveal the hitman in front of you or if the sheriff is next to the governor when the hitman tries to assassinate him and you have handcuffs you can arrest the hitman and win the game to decide who the start player is take one of your tokens and just do a heads or tails flip to decide who is going to be the first player the first player then starts with two actions they can do any two actions from the four actions possible the first action is they can move any two of their characters, either in the street or in the saloon. To do this, you take one character from the saloon and two from the street, and then swap them around. Because you can do this in front of your opponent or 
behind your back or underneath the table. There is one exception to this action. You can never place the governor in the saloon because he doesn't visit those kind of places. He must always be out in the street. Another action you may wish to do is look at one of the tokens which is in the street. To do this, you choose the character that is next to the token that you want to look at and you reveal them to your opponent. You then take the token in secret, look at it, go, mm-hmm, and then place it back exactly where you found it and then turn your character back round to face you. Another action you can do is you can take a token, but there are some restrictions with this. Number one, you need to name what that token is before you pick it up and reveal it. And number two, only certain characters can pick up certain tokens. So if you turn your sheriff character around and you tell your opponent that that is handcuffs, you pick up the token, you reveal it and it is handcuffs, you get to keep that token and place it face up in front of you. If it wasn't handcuffs, you just place it back face down where you found it. The Hitman is the only character that can pick up bullets because he needs them to do the hit. The Sheriff is the only one that can pick up the handcuffs because he needs to arrest someone. And the Governor is the only one that can pick up the vote token. But all the other characters can pick up the envelopes. If a token has been successfully removed from the street, what you'll do is you'll slide all the tokens down away from the saloon and add a new one. Now the final action you can do is you can use your special powers of your characters. So the governor, the only power he has is the power to pick up voting envelopes and then to call the election by picking up the election token. If you pick up the election token and you have more votes than your opponent, you win the game. The Hitman, his special power is He's the only one that can pick up bullet tokens, but also if he names the governor as the character card opposite him and he has a bullet token and it is the governor, he assassinates the governor, therefore winning the game. If it is not the governor opposite him, the assassination has failed. That player then loses that bullet token and both players return their characters back to normal. Then we have the sheriff. The sheriff can do the same thing as the hitman. He's the only one that can pick up handcuffs and if he can name the hitman as being opposite him and he has handcuffs, he can arrest him, ending the game and causing a victory. But if he is wrong, again, he loses his handcuffs and both characters turn back round. And if your opponent's hitman finds your governor and shoots him, but your sheriff is next to your governor and you have handcuffs, you can make an arrest and arrest the hitman winning the game. You can also call out the bandit with the sheriff. Again, it's just a simple case of saying, that guy is the bandit next to my sheriff and if he is, he will be immobilized. You will need a pair of handcuffs for this, but you get them back unless you've made a mistake, then you will lose those handcuffs. The immobilized bandit will now remain visible to your opponent for the rest of the game. The Indian, you'll reveal him and then you'll reveal your opponent's character directly opposite the Indian. No choice, I'm afraid. You will see what they have before returning your tiles back to normal. The storekeeper, after you reveal him, you can then swap the position of three tokens in front of that shopkeeper. The dancer works almost the same. When you reveal her, what will happen is you won't be moving the tokens, but you'll actually be moving the three characters in front of the dancer of your opponent. With the reporter, you reveal them and then you name the character in front of them. If you're correct, that character stays face visible to your opponent all through the rest of the game. Now the bandit's not called the bandit for nothing. If you name either the hitman or the sheriff in front of your bandit character, you get to successfully steal a bullet token if it is a hitman or a handcuff if it's the sheriff. The mayor is a very special character. If you reveal the character to the right of the mayor, you can amplify their power. For example, if the Indian is next to the mayor, you reveal the Indian and then you reveal your mayor. Your Indian now has a choice of three characters that they can reveal in front of them. Or for the shopkeeper, if the shopkeeper is revealed next to the mayor, 
he can have the ability to swap any of the five tokens in front of him. But there is a restriction. The mayor does not work with the bandit, the hitman, or the dancer. And then finally, we have the reverend. The reverend has the power to protect. Let's say that your bandit is on the left side, as indicated by the arrow, of your reverend. And the sheriff of your opponent arrests your bandit. If you reveal your reverend next to them, they are let off the hook and are not immobilized. Or if the hitman is on the left when the sheriff arrests him, the reverend can be revealed and then the arrest does not apply. Unfortunately, the sheriff will lose his handcuffs and have to try again. But if at any time in the game, the immobilized bandit is on the left side of your reverend, you just reveal your reverend and it will unimmobilize him anyway. After a player has done two of those possible four actions, it goes over to the other player and they can do the same. The game continues until either a governor has been elected or a governor has been killed or a hitman has been arrested. And there you have it. That is how you play Outlaws. Woo -woo. So, my first impressions of Outlaws, bearing in mind that this is a prototype and that there's only 10 characters, although the stretch goals have now unlocked other characters. Hmm, exciting stuff. I really like this game. It is good. It is a great two player back and forth deduction memory bluffing game. And it's those three elements which make this game shine. This game is very, very medium weight, I'd say. I wouldn't say it was a light to medium. Um, it could be a light to medium because my daughter has picked this up and she's 10 years old. And of course there's this learning curve because there are lots of different special powers and how they interact with each other. But after your first couple of games, you kind of really, really understand the game and then the game really shines. As I said, the learning curve is there. I mean, I've, I've taught the game to some friends and sometimes someone thinks that they've lost because their governor's been shot by their opponent's hitman but actually they didn't realize that the sheriff was stood right next to him and of course they had actually won. So a learning curve is, uh, again, it gets part of any game. Uh, but this game, you'll learn pretty quickly because it's a pretty quick game. You'll play it in about anything between about two minutes long to 15 minutes long. And that's the great thing about this game. It just plays really quickly and really rapidly. Although at the beginning, you're gonna have this this moment where you're thinking oh, okay all right um how is this game work what is my best strategy you're best off just diving in and going okay i'm gonna turn this character around and look at this token there you go um and then once you start playing and there's this back and forth you start to go now there's quite a bit of replayability in uh this version although there's only the 10 characters um because it's the challenge factor if you've lost your game you're going to want to play a game because you want to win against the other guy. And the other guys are going to want to play because they're going to want to defend their, their right of, as champion of the world. And it's, it's this lovely back and forth. And, it, you know, you will sit down, you'll play it, and then you'll play it again. And then you'll play it probably a third time or a fourth time. So there is a great bit of replayability because the characters are in different places. Again, the game comes from the players, how they bluff. You know, you know, you're taking your, your, the characters off the board and shuffling behind your back and you go, okay, have I put it back exactly where I left it or have I put it here? <laughs> and what was that character there anyway? So it's it's great to have to, to, to have to use your memory to remember where characters were, where tokens were and what kind of strategy you were going for in the first place because you'd be thinking, okay, I'm good. I found their hitman. I'm going to rest him with my sheriff. Oops, I haven't got any handcuffs. I need to find some handcuffs. Or should I just go for the election? Because they haven't got any envelopes and I just found an envelope because I was looking for handcuffs. So your strategy is going to change as you play. And every time you play, your strategy is going to be different. And it's great because you've got three ways of winning. Now, if you go to the Kickstarter, you'll see that some of the stretch goals are extra characters. Uh, which are added to the game. Now, I don't know how that's going to work uh, due to the fact that it might be you always draft 10 characters um, and each player has the same 10 characters out of all the extra characters that there are. Uh, or if, you know, you can use any 10 characters that you want and then your opponent can use another 10 to So I don't know how that's going to work, but of course that is very interesting because that's going to increase the replayability a lot. Um, also, if you go to their Kickstarter campaign, 
you'll see that there are two pledge levels. There's a pledge level for one copy of the game and there's a pledge level for two copies of the game. And that's all there is. And where was I going? I know where I was going. Because you can get two copies, there's a variant for a three and four player game where there's several variants for a three and four player game, which is really interesting. And again, will we be able to choose if we want the green version or the red version of Hmm. So if this Kickstarter interests you, there is a link in the end credits and there's also a link to the Kickstarter in the show notes below. Go ahead and check it out. If you want to check out some more videos that I've been doing and more crazy things that I've been doing and other stuff that I've been doing, you can always go to boardgameseverybodyshould.com uh, and of course you can subscribe, like and share to your heart's content. There you go. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to say Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you found this video informative and it's pointed you in the direction whether Outlaws is a board game for you or your friend or uh, it should be buried at Boot Hill with the other Outlaws. There you go. So, uh, ciao for now. Just